Welcome to MarcusG.TV. I'm Chef Marcus Giuliano, a chef on a mission. Today's mission is nutrition. And I'm shooting from home while drinking my green smoothie, uh, spinach, bananas, coconut water, and a bunch of other good things like uh, ashwagandha, maca, shilajit, uh, makuna. Uh, what else did I put in here? A bunch of, bunch of powders I put in here. Just because I have all these powders at home. And sometimes I put powders, sometimes I don't. Sometimes I just at a minimalist at this. Um, but today I said, let me go all out. The powders are here. So let's get the powders in. And all those are a bunch of different things that are address certain issues in your body or, um, what should I say, provide certain nutrients, certain energies. And a lot of that is some Ayurvedic herbs like the shilajit and the ashwagandha. But on to today's topic. Today's topic, men's health. Uh, article on men's health. Is a vegan diet dangerous? Germany thinks so. Germany, the country, thinks it's dangerous. And I got to tell you, I'm going to keep making videos on this stuff to keep educating people. I'm going to tell you right now, yes, a vegan diet is 100% dangerous. It is 100% dangerous to the beef industry, to the dairy industry, to the poultry industry. That is who the vegan diet is dangerous for. Okay, so let's not let's let's put our facts straight. Very dangerous for those industries. But as far as human health, <laughs> there's a lot more things that are dangerous in a vegan diet for human health. And the vegan diet keeps getting vilified. Over and over, and now uh, Italy has this proposed law to to prosecute and put to have jail time for vegan parents, parents that are raising their children vegan. They can now go to jail, uh, or they, if this law is passed, can go to jail in Italy. So now Germany is making a statement, and are they jumping on the same bandwagon? So here's the article from Men's Health: Is being vegan vegan dangerous to your health? Following the rise in popularity of veganism in its capital city, Berlin, Germany has released a reactionary statement asserting that the diet is hazardous, especially for children and pregnant women. <laughs> so, the way a lot of governments work, or several governments work, is, you know, you have lobbyists, you have industries, you have industries that need to stay in business. So, for example, in Norway... The salmon farm industry devastated Norway. They were going in, they were abusing this and that. All of a sudden, the Norwegian government stood their ground and said, we can't do this anymore, and here's some stricter regulations. But there's still a lot of controversy in Norway, and there's a lot of people that are still politically connected. So, yes, the salmon farms have gotten cleaner, but they're not by any means something you want to eat. Norwegian salmon, a lot of experts are saying it's one of the toxic foods out there not to eat more than one portion a month. So what does this industry do? This industry, industry goes to Canada because they can own the government in Canada more than they can own the government in Norway. So they can get in and get all kinds of perks and benefits because Canada says, oh, the industry's coming in, we're providing jobs. But then they let the, the fisheries, aquaculture, write the rules and, and, and the rules to their game. And it's just amazing the way, and this is how governments work. They let these companies come in. They let these industries thrive or come in and get their way because they we need the jobs. We need the economy. We need the dollars. So, you know, I'm not sure how Germany works 100%, but, you know, if this if the person who's making a statement from the German government might have ties to the pork industry. You know, Germany is a, is known for their pork. They're known for their for for, for their um, how do you want to call it? Is it their Bushenschank? I think it's called a Bushenschank, which is uh, those big tents or whatever that's just sort of pork and wine. And so they they have a culture that's very driven around a pig and around eating meat and sausage. So for them, that's part of their culture, and these companies have to make sure that they protect their protect their interests, so they can easily buy you know elected officials that come just say something stupid like this. So this is a surprising move from the government, especially as many consider Berlin at the forefront of the rising vegan movement in Europe. I just posted an article the other day on my Chef on a Mission fan page about all the cool vegan things happening in Berlin, in Germany, and how progressive they are. 
especially as many consider, okay, uh, research has estimated that somewhere around 10% of the city's population follows a practice with new vegan butcher shops popping up every day. The city is even has even hosted Vegans Summerfest, a large annual festival that takes place every August in Alexander Falls. Recently, a uh, Portuguese food writer documented her conversion to a plant-based lifestyle based after attending the event and experiencing the city's embrace of the diet. So understandably, it came to a shock to the vegan community that the government recently re released a statement containing plenty of scared terminology. A purely plant-based diet makes it more difficult to give your body some of the important nutrients it needs. A purely plant-based diet makes it more difficult to give the body some of the important nutrients it needs, the statement reads. All right, so things that are in this smoothie right here. The half a pound of spinach going in here. The iron content of the spinach, the, 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 the nutrients in the spinach, there's protein in spinach, there's the other things that I've added in here, the bananas, the potassium, the 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 nutrients from all of those those, those other things that I've added, the ashwagandha, which is basically a, a type of ginseng, it's an Indian type of ginseng, you can't get in the in, in the in the carnivore on a carnivore diet what's in my smoothie. It is impossible to get what's in my smoothie in that. Okay, I learned a long time ago by following all these alternative nutritionists, all these alternative doctors, that everything that you possibly need and more is available in a plant-based diet. And that animals are getting those, some of those nutrients through their plant-based diet. So I remember reading back in 2000, maybe 1999, that this one author plays this whole case in his book called Get Healthy Now, very famous author. And he says, Everything you need is in the plant kingdom. Everything is there. Everything and more that you need is there. You can't get chlorophyll from eating beef or pork or chicken or fish. Chlorophyll is one of the essential things to life. It's what your blood is made up of. Chlorophyll runs your blood. You can't get chlorophyll in eating a steak. It's impossible. You get this from your veggies. We all know to eat your fruits and veggies. It's one of the oldest statements out there. You know, eat your fruits and veggies, eat your fruits and veggies, eat your veggies, eat your veggies, eat your veggies, eat your veggies right? So the things that things that you can consume, consume in, in a, a plant-based diet just to, and when it's consumed correctly, see, here's the problem. A lot of people don't do a diet correctly. So they do a vegan diet because they're doing it because they want to make it, uh, 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 they want to stand up for the animals or an animal rights person. So for them, nutrition isn't, <laughs> isn't key. So they're going to go eat white pasta with fake butter. They're going to go eat pizza with fake cheese. They're going to eat all these crap foods, cookies, candies, cakes that are all vegan, that are that, that have manipulated food in it, that has soy isolate, whey, um, not whey, but uh, wheat, wheat, gluten, and all this other stuff. Yeah, that stuff is crap, and it wrecks havoc on your body. But I got to tell you, whether you eat a meat diet or a vegan diet, there's bad foods in all of them. So I'm going to say, like I said in my Italy video, these countries need to go after the fast food, fast food restaurants, and they go after the food processors, and just say no more of this. You, if, if, they, if there's a real co co commitment to health, if Germany is really concerned about the health and the well-being and this and that, <laughs> then do the scare tactics on crap food to begin with. Whether it's whether, whether it's some kind of crap-filled chocolate-covered bacon or bacon or some kind of sausage with nitrates or some kind of vegan cookie. Go after these companies. Set higher standards if you're really concerned instead of using scare tactics on vegans. All that is is just the beef industry flexing their muscles and saying, yeah, vegan diets, no good. They're rising. First of all, the beef industry knows they're losing shares. Uh, even to meat eaters. Even meat eaters are eating less meat nowadays uh, just because they know that, that it's not all that great for them. Some of them know this and say, hey, it's not that great. I need to cut back. I have cut back. You know, this is what I'm doing. So this is just scare tactics, scare tactic uh, BS from, from these big industries. So the one thing that beef eaters say, meat eaters, the meat industry says, well, you can't get your vitamin B12 from a vegetarian diet, from a plant-based diet. There's no B12 in it, okay? That may be true, but let me tell you something. The majority of people that are B12 deficient are meat eaters. And the way this has been explained to me is that 
B12 can be produced in your body. And by eating crap food your whole life and damaging your digestive system and all that kind of stuff, your body is unable to produce, assimilate, absorb, take advantage of the B12 that it can produce or the B12 that it's going to consume. So your body can just, whether you're a meat eater or a plant-based a plant eater, you can you have the same odds of being B12 deficient. So it really has nothing to do with consuming beef. And from what I understand, years ago when we had real soil and we had organic soil and food wasn't sanitized like it is today, some of those so those B12 molds would be left on carrots and you could get B12 through a plant-based diet just as much as you could as a beef diet. So um, B12, that theory really doesn't hold up to, uh, to the meat industry and to, and to people. And, you know, the problem is it takes our bodies are, are so abused by everything that we do that it takes so much B12. That's why you only need like seven micrograms a day, a very, very, very small amount. And that's why that that uh, oral pill, the sublingual pill, the pill you take that's B12 is probably going to be a thousand micrograms because the companies know that most of that's just going to go right out your system and your body can't even absorb it at all. So here's my suggestion. If you're concerned about your health and if you're concerned about is a vegan diet right for me, you're concerned about whatever type of diet right for you, look at the processed foods. Eat tons of fruits and veggies. Cut out the processed foods. And when you even think of it like oil is a processed food. Cooking with oil, cooking with whether it's canola oil, corn oil, soy oil, or olive oil, these are all refined foods. These are foods that are man that are that are processed and taken away from, from what they were in nature. So the more processed foods you can get out of your diet, the more processed chips, cookies, cakes, anything that comes in packages like that stuff. And don't read the labels because the labels are going to tell you all the so-called good things. If you read the Frosted Flakes box... They're going to tell you why you should be eating frosted flakes, and they, they they might have they might have a valid reason. Yes, we have vitamin C in frosted flakes. We have vitamin D. We have this or that, but it's still a crap food. Eat real food. Eat unprocessed foods. And you know the biggest thing here is they like to be scaring parents on this. You know, here's my big thing: to give your kid to have a one year old birthday party and let your kid sit there and stick his face into a chocolate cake. That is so damaging. That is so detrimental to your child because this is something you've taught your child now at a very, very early age that eating crap is part of celebrating, okay? That's an association you make. And every birthday, you get them this cake, you make those big celebration, let them eat like crap, okay? That should be outlawed. That should be banned. Why can't we learn how to make cakes out of, out of watermelon? You cut a watermelon round and put some strawberries on it and some blueberries and some kiwis and some mangoes. Why can't we... Why can't parents do that? Why can't we teach our kids that, that, hey, you can't have stuff that tastes good. There's plenty of things that taste good, but they're fruits and vegetables. They're fruits. These, these, these fruits that are so healthy for you. So, you know, if they really want to go after parents, and they really want to go after parents for raising kids, look at all the practices that, that, that non-plant-based eaters do, okay? I know for me, raising our kids on a plant-based diet, they never got crap cake and crap cookies and stuff like that. We taught them to eat real food. And my kids just went out with another person the other day for, for lunch. And this other friend of theirs wanted like fried chicken and this and that. And my kids are like, there's nothing really for us to eat here. We're going to have a, my kids are 16 and 14. They're like, mom, we had salad. We ate salad today because there was nothing at this place for us to eat. All right. So teach your kids how to eat right. No matter if you're a carnivore or a plant-based eater. Just teach them how to eat right, the right foods. Teach them how to cook. And make sure that you as a parent don't falter. And this is how you stick to it. Because your parent, your kids get confused. They don't understand, well, we can have McDonald's today because it's a convenient thing for mommy and daddy because we don't have time to cook. But normally we don't eat McDonald's. So now when they're 16 years old out there on the go in between class and between whatever, sports or whatever – we don't have the time. So, well, mommy said it's always, if she didn't have the time, go to McDonald's. No, now we can go to McDonald's. It doesn't work like that. As parents, you have to set the line and that's it. And don't think you don't can't give your kids like all these cool, delicious foods because that's totally not the case. You can make rice pudding with maple syrup. You can make tons of things that are sweet. You can teach your kids the joys of eating ripe fruit like mangoes. I put a case of mangoes on my counter. They're gone like that. I just bought a five-pound bag of dried organic mangoes. Give it a week and they'll be gone. I brought home a case of nectarines last week. 
gone. The kids let them, my kids let them ripen up and they were all over them. Today I just cut up a huge, huge cantaloupe and put it in, in the uh, in the refrigerator and I cut up a watermelon, diced it up and put it in the refrigerator. If you raise your kids like that, instead of going to the cabinet to grab snacks and cookies, it's so much better off, so, so better off. Well, this video's like 15 minutes. I didn't mean to get let it get this long. The point is, a vegan diet is not the culprit. Crappy food in your diet is the culprit. And these governments need to start waking up and going in and going after the food manufacturers. I'm Chef Marcus Giuliano. Thanks for watching. If you like my videos, please hit like, subscribe to my channel, and definitely pass it on.